What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to Detached Garage. If you're new to the channel, my name is Sean and this channel is all about helping you plan, design, build and upgrade your garage. Today's episode is part one of Garage Goals where we're gonna go through the 10 garage goals that I have for my garage. Hopefully this will give you some guidance to get towards your garage goals as well. Let's get to it. Welcome back and thanks for watching everybody. Again, in today's episode, we are talking about garage goals. You could have a goal to have a tiny garage, the smallest garage you could ever build. You could have a goal to have the gigantic garage, the biggest garage you can afford to build. But ultimately, I want to know what your garage goals are. So throw them down in the comments. We're going to go through my 10 garage goals in this episode. And in a future episode, we will relate those 10 garage goals to the 12 scoping categories so we can get that goal out of our head, onto paper, and make a tangible plan to execute around those garage goals. Let's get into it. Number one is a lift. I have always wanted a lift. A lift makes so much difference. You need to just do even simple maintenance like rotating tires or changing oil. A lift makes a world of difference. Absolutely, do you need a lift to work on a car in your garage? No, not at all. If you've ever watched B is for Build, they didn't even have uh, quick jacks back in the day. So, um, and got a lot done with the Lotus Savora before even quick jacks came around. So. Um, a lift is top on my priority list. And why do I need to understand that goal? Well, because if I have a flat, uh, a flat ceiling in the garage, then I need to have at least a 12 foot ceiling to, in order to put that lift in. Now, uh, the way I'm going to design my garage, I'm gonna have a lower ceiling on one side of it and then a vaulted ceiling on the other side so I won't have to worry about that 12 foot requirement since the vaulted ceiling will be much higher than that. So um, that is the first goal that I have, build a garage with the proper allocations to put in and install a lift in that garage. Goal number two, heated floor. So. Uh, being in Wisconsin, being in winter, and you can see I have a sweatshirt on in the middle of June because it's 50 degrees outside right now. It's ridiculous. Uh, we like to have a heated garage because uh, it is not a nice place to be in the winter. So when it's negative 10 in the winter, I really want heat in my garage. And one of the most efficient ways to do that, uh, especially if you're gonna be opening and closing the door quite a bit, is to heat the slab, which will act as a giant heat sink to be able to continue heating back up that space when you open the door and let a lot of that air out. Since you have this giant heat sink, it will reheat that cold air that comes in very quickly. So having a heated slab is very high on my priority list. And the reason I wanna heat it that way is for, from an efficiency standpoint. Now heated slabs don't heat the place very quickly. They, uh, they take a long time to get going. Heated slabs are much better for a, call it a consistent temperature where you're not changing the temperature up and down very quickly. If you want that type of heating, it's probably gonna be best if you go with a different heat source. I'm thinking about a combination or a combination strategy to heat the garage. Number one with the slab to keep it at a base temperature, call it around 45 to 50 degrees in the winter, no matter what the temperature is outside. And then when I'm in there working, if I wanna crank it up a little bit, then I can use either a mini split in the future or um, some sort of supplemental air heating that will continue to bring the temperature in the garage further up. So heated slab, I'm gonna go with uh, six inch reinforced concrete with PEX in the concrete. I still have to do the calculations to figure out what size PEX I need, what size boiler, all that stuff. It's gonna be an electric boiler for sure. Goal number three, loft and storage. So I absolutely want storage above my garage and not just a attic type storage, but a condition type storage to store more critical components that I don't want 
um, in a humidity environment or something like that, I want it in that same conditioned space. So um, I'm gonna do a loft above one bay of the garage and a vaulted ceiling for the other bay, which will have the lift inside of it. And then that loft area, I'll be able to do some storage up there uh, for larger components, car parts that I'm taking off, um, other just general storage for my garage. Eventually, I could potentially turn some of that storage into a little office area, which uh, is on my mind for the future. Haven't completely planned it out yet, but that is definitely one of my goals is to have storage in a loft above the garage. Goal number four. I want to be able to wash my car in the dead of winter and be warm and cozy and not worry about freezing cold water or freezing my hands. I want to be able to wash all the salt off of the car in the winter inside. So what does that all entail? I need to design the slab where I have a drain in that area. I also need to design the plumbing system of the garage so that I have water in the pressure washer uh, for an indoor wash bay in that area. So little, lots of things that kind of go into this goal of wanting to be able to wash, to foam down um, and spray off a car in the dead of winter inside the garage. Some things you don't think about that I'm already starting to think about, I don't have a solution for quite yet, is the humidity that's gonna come when, you know, getting that spray off of the pressure washer in a closed up garage in the middle of winter. Um, so I'm already thinking about potentially like a curtain to come down from the ceiling between that bay where the drain and pressure washer will be versus the bay where the lift is going to be. So just thinking about that, nothing set in stone yet, but goal number four is to be able to wash a car in the garage in the dead of winter in a very comfy and cozy place. Goal number five, and probably one of the most important goals on the entire list to me, is to build a garage that is prepped for being off-grid. So I really, really want to make my own power, make my own energy, and also get our entire household off-grid, um, and to do that with solar power. Um, I have a pre-order in for a Rivian R1T, but I want to be able to essentially make my own gasoline from the sun to bring that solar power in, have battery storage in the facility to be able to then plug my uh, truck in when I get home, have a full tank of gas every time I leave the house, and uh, really also be a backup power supply to the house as well when we don't have sunny days in the winter when the sun isn't shining as much. So goal number five is to design and build this garage with solar and off-grid battery storage in mind. So a lot is gonna go into that goal to make that possible. There is no way I have the type of cash flow that's gonna be able to do that right away. But because I know that's one of my goals and that's one of my top five goals, I need to design the garage with that in mind to have the proper infrastructure to make maybe make some decisions differently than if I was never going to put solar panels up or never going to do backup battery storage for the entire house. So just some things to think about differently when I want to accomplish that goal. Goal number six, and this kind of goes along with goal number five of being off grid, but EV charging. Electric vehicles are coming and I think it would be very silly for anybody in today's day and age if you're going to use your garage for anything automotive related to not start considering putting EV charging capability into your garage. So Benjamin Nelson, another Wisconsin native, I'll put a link in the description to his channel below. He already has solar panels on his garage and he already has charging capabilities in his garage as well. I would love to do a collaboration with Ben and take you guys on a tour of his garage. You can probably get through most of his garage just by uh, clicking on his channel and going through his videos. Even plug-in hybrid vehicles with a higher amperage outlet, things like that, uh, we need to take into consideration now when building the garage so we can get the proper infrastructure to do that charging fast and effective and efficient in the future when we're all gonna probably be driving around in electric vehicles. Now that doesn't mean I won't have um, internal combustion engines. I am an absolute gearhead. Um, I love cars. I love the noise that V12 engines make.
So um, ultimately, this is really just for uh, my daily driver, which will be my commuter. I don't think there's anything wrong with having internal combustion engines. This is just, again, my mindset, my goals for thinking about what I want to do with my garage for the future when your daily driver is likely going to be an electric vehicle in the future. Goal number seven, wash bay. So we already talked about my goal of wanting to wash a car in the garage, in the dead of winter, inside, and making sure I build and design the garage with that goal in mind. The other thing I wanna do is in the summer, the spring, and the fall, when it is decent outside, I wanna be able to wash the car outside and have a covered area with a boom pole similar to Matt from Obsessed Garage and quite a few others. Uh, that have put a boom pole in their private residence to have a dedicated outdoor wash bay. It will be so nice to have that where I don't have to chase uh, the sun of, uh, you know, getting up super early so I'm not washing in direct sunlight, that sort of thing. Just have a nice covered area with a boom pole from the pressure washer to quickly uh, foam the car down, wash it off for quick washes, spend more time out there in the shade uh, with, um, uh, sealant polishing all that all that stuff polishing probably do in the garage but um, overall one of my goals have a dedicated wash bay on the outside of my garage throw up a picture right now that will um, that I'll show you where I'm thinking that wash bay will go on my current garage design um, but it's good and bad that we have to attach it to the house now uh, to get the proper square footage that we want but that will be a great place for the dedicated wash bay. Goal number eight, a family area. Party area, bring people over, have a great time, cook out, uh, have a fire in the winter, that sort of thing. So. I really want a dedicated family area to the garage as well for um, just that reason. Entertainment, hanging out, after working on the, the cars in the garage all night, just ha head out there, uh, have a little bonfire or a fire pit area, have a grill out there for parties and probably a refrigerator as well. Um, but really want a dedicated family area out there where we can hang out, I can hang out with my wife and kids and just overall, um, just have a nice area that is incorporated with the garage so it's not just, oh, dad's out in the garage all the time or something like that. It is a family area, a family building where the entire family can get together and hang out together. For the family area, I am thinking of a covered in porch. I'll put a, a picture up on the screen right now to help walk you through what I'm kind of trying to visualize for this family area. So it would be the full uh, depth of the garage, 30 feet, and it would be right around 15 feet wide to have de a decent amount of space in there. So I'm thinking putting a grill in there, putting a fire pit in there, obviously furniture, possibly some roll-up screens to keep the state bird of Wisconsin, the mosquito, out of that area. Um, we live fairly close to some water, so uh, mosquitoes are definitely an issue around here. Um, but just looking to have like a covered porch that's attached to the house where we can go hang out, grill out, and just have a great time. And it's associated with the garage as well. Goal number nine. I wanna match the decor of the garage with the outside look and feel of our house. Now I could absolutely throw up a pole barn building or a post frame building with uh, different siding that would be kind of close to the house. But overall, I wanna match the construction, the durability, the, the building techniques that are used to build my current house along with that garage. So uh, we're gonna do similar siding. We're, we're gonna do newer, probably hardy board siding uh, on the garage. And then we're also gonna do two by six construction, stick built. Uh, with a foundation and all that good stuff. So matching the house is critical. I don't want this building to look out of place. I don't. I want it to add to the value of my home and really tie the entire property together. So matching the house, the exterior look of the house and the garage and making that um, as seamless as possible is a huge goal of mine for this garage build. Goal number 10, we're talking cabinets, we're talking TVs, 
other equipment besides the list to go into the garage to make it a working space, a special space, and the space that I wanna hang out in. So, cabinets. Uh, I have a rolling tool chest right now. I will definitely still keep that, but I also want cabinets that can have tools in them uh, because I'm not a mobile mechanic to be rolling my tool chest around the garage. I will have, I will still have that in a cart and a workspace on top to uh, take tools out of the tool chest and roll them over to where the project is and work on them. But ultimately I want a nice clean, storage area with vertical cabinets as well for the larger equipment uh, in the garage. I also want a TV and sound system mounted in there as well. Again, none of this is happening right out of the gate when I build the garage. This, these will be upgrades as we go through, uh, but I wanna keep this goal in mind so I can space my outlets correctly. I'd, I'd really like a sandblasting cabinet. I'd really like a um, hydraulic press to punch bearings out and use dimple dies to um, put forms in metal and whatnot. So all these pieces of equipment and the, these, this goal and this vision I have, um, I need to think about ahead of time so I can save some money and save some time on the back end when I add these additions many years down the road. So goal number 10 of the garage goals part one is to have the proper allocations for cabinets, TV, sound system, and other equipment in my garage. I wanna hear from you. Tell me down in the comments below, what are your goals for your garage build? You could have three, you could have 10, you could have 15. Either way, let me know. I wanna hear from you because this channel in this garage is all about me learning through this process, making mistakes, screwing up, and hopefully helping you not do the same thing and be able to reach your goal. So. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. We'll have part two coming out very shortly where we take these 10 goals and associate them with the 12 scoping categories to really help get these goals out of our heads, onto paper, in a tangible plan that will allow us to build a better garage in the future. Thanks again for watching Detach Garage.